Travis. This is for you. This is Hillbilly's Dish, and I hope you enjoy it. Hey y'all, welcome back to Small Town Southern Wife. Today, we're in Pat's kitchen, and this is Miss Pat. She was a barber and Emery's neighbor while Travis was growing up. And whenever he was little, when he'd get hungry every morning and when Barbara'd still be in the bed, he'd sneak down to Miss Pat's house and say, I'm hungry, Pat. Will you fix me something? And she'd take them in the house and fix them a big bowl of warm grits. And she helped raise Travis, Trina, and Tony all their life. And she's been around ever since they were probably how old? Babies. About two, three. Well, Travis wasn't quite two when I started keeping him, and Trina, she was about four, and um, Tony, I didn't get to keep him when he was a baby. They went to Fuquay, North Carolina, Oh. and so then when they came back to Tacoa, I was, you know, uh, I was up there about every other weekend, and yep. would get to love on Tony. And so they just always been, you know, right around our house and raised up with Michelle and and poor Travis thought I was his real mama. Yep, you used to feed him grits every morning. For every morning he needed to come down there, he'd sneak down there and come get his grits, wouldn't he? And <laughs> say, so I don't know where my mama is. <laughs> well, anyway, we're going to go ahead and get started on this recipe. And today she's making... I'll let her tell you what she's doing, but this is one of Hill's uh, favorite recipes. This is something that he learned to cook when he was working at the Toyota place, and it's called a pork chop and vegetable casserole. And it's a layer of pork chops and a layer of potatoes and a layer of um, sauerkraut and you can put onion in it. And it's a layer and you, you just, Put it in the pan and you'll cook it for about 60 minutes. Now let's get started on this recipe of a pork chop casserole. All right, Lynn, I was telling you that my mother-in-law got on to her daughter and I for peeling too much peeling off of the potatoes. And of course, I was peeling too much peeling and, and I was peeling peeling and potatoes. And so, when I started using this, I thought, Lord, years ago, I sure didn't need that. <laughs> Back when Miss Hill was getting on to you? Yeah, because I was peeling too much. I was peeling the potato away and the peelings. And so, she got on to us about that. So, if you listen, you learn a lot. Some people don't listen. That's true. <laughs> You'd get us if we wasted anything. Yeah, she sure really would. She had 16 kids and she didn't waste nothing. <laughs> oh my gosh, 16? Yeah, no twins. Oh gosh. Mm. I'm barely taking the skin off. Oh. I'm listening. All right. <laughs> well, that's good. <laughs> and now mm. we gotta go wash them in a minute, don't we? Yeah, I gotta wash them and then we'll slice them and bring the pork chops back as you come. And... Uh, you bring them over here and I'll get them portioned out. And what we're gonna do is make a pork chop and vegetable casserole for the night's supper. I know y'all call it dinner. I call it supper. We do too. <laughs> well, some people call it dinner and I, I wasn't raised like that. That's right. All right, you want to wash them now? Yep, let me take them over there and get them washed. Everything else ready to go. So, anyways, just watch me as I go, and this will be good, you all. It's going to be good. You're going to take those pork chops first? Yeah, the pork chops goes first. But first of all, we're going to spray the pan. Start with the pork chops for yep. this, for this hey, recipe here. Talking about the pork chops, you remember that time... Emery and Hill was walking through the pasture looking for a plow. And? And uh, Hill, I mean, Emery dared Hill to uh, kill that pig and they'd cook it. Oh, yeah, I remember them. <laughs> and then uh, Hill took that gun out and he killed that, shot that pig. And they went home and they said, well, now we got him. What are we going to do with it? We're going to have to cook it. 
And they got that pig up and they cooked it. And then the next day. But they cleaned it first, didn't they? Yeah, they got it all ready and barbecued it that night. And the next day they invited A.P. Tims over there. <laughs> oh, what a character that was. <laughs> yeah. And then he came over there to, to eat dinner that day. And they had that pig. And he didn't know he was eating his own pig that they had got out of his pasture that night. Mm. But here's your pork chops. chops thank you and this will be real good after you get it cooked and everything so I'm going to start out you put your pork chops on the bottom layer so it can you know cook up through the vegetables I'm gonna get about three of these nice pork chops on the bottom of the pan and then we'll use another one to put in the center after we put some of the vegetables in here all right, I've got three in the bottom of this iron skillet. All right, now I'm gonna slice some potatoes and maybe just a few of these and then I'll layer it with something else. Boy, these taters are <laughs> tough. <laughs> well, I'll turn this around so I can help you. This was one of Hill's favorite recipes. They called him Hill. His real name was Carlton Hill, but everybody called him Hill or Hillbilly. That's a little bit thick right there. Is it still on? Mm -hmm. Mm hmm. Let's see, about like that. Yeah. This little knife cuts better than that big one did. Yeah, it does. And by the way, I did wash my hands before we started on these vegetables. I did too. We got clean hands. Mm -mm. Boy, this will be good tonight. Yep. Travis will like it. <laughs> He'll probably be so tired he can't even enjoy it. Oh, well, this will bring back memories. Oh, it will. He remembers that time Emery and uh, Hill killed that pig and cooked it. Yeah. He always talks about that. <laughs> that poor old AP didn't know he was eating his own, own pig. <laughs> Wish we could bring back them days. Yeah. Now I'm going to, um, we need a fork. Okay. Now I got a spoon too for the. Okay. We're gonna uh, put a little bit of this uh, seasoning down here on the pork chops, and it's called total seasoning. So I'm gonna put some of the seasoning in here. I don't use the lots of seasoning now, and we won't be putting salt in here because this has all the seasoning you really need. But if you're a, a salt eater. You can um, put your own salt in here after it gets done. Now, I'm going to be spreading out some sauerkraut. And I know everybody says, sauerkraut, I don't like that. But you'll be surprised at how well it seasons the pork chops. I probably should have poured some of this out in a bowl. Maybe before I go too far, we will pour some in a bowl. I remember when my mom used to make sauerkraut and let it sour through the summer months, you know. Well, when we come in from school, we like to have a, a snack. And I'd bring some of the girls home from school with me, and we would get into Mama's sauerkraut, and it would still be in a churn. Well, Mama got to missing some of the sauerkraut, and she came to me and she says, Patsy, says, do you know anything about my sauerkraut being gone out of the turn? Yes, Mama, me and Judy and Gloria Jean, we ate some after school. That was our snack. Well, guess who got in trouble? Me, of course. So, 
Next, I'm gonna uh, put a little bit of this. This is cheddar cheese shredded. I'm gonna put some, not an awful lot, but just a little bit. And then we're gonna put some uh, mushroom soup, uh, cream of mushroom. And Travis canned this and made it. So we're gonna try it out today on this. Mm. Let, let me get something to get that with. There's an opener over there in my drawer. Boy, he sealed that up really good. That means that's got a good seal. Yeah. Anyways, this should be really good. And you know, if you don't want to have but one pan of something to eat, you would get your meat, which is your protein. You would, these others is your vegetables. And it's really good. You find anything, Lynn? This that thing. won't open it. It's too flimsy. Really? Let me try mm -hmm. to get it. Mm. And I, I can take all There's this. There's a beer opener over there. <laughs> what they call <laughs> what they call the church key. <laughs> oh, that is. That's what I should have. That's what I was looking for. Well, there's one right up here in the uh, second drawer over next to the wall. I got it for you, though. Yeah, you that got it. That is what it's called. What, church key? A church key. That's what the guys used to call it when they had to have a beer opener. Was a church key. <laughs> I don't know why they called it that now. I can tell you though, they did call it that. There's another thing I need to tell you. I don't measure. I just dip and put on there. And if you want, I gotta have measurements. You're gonna have to learn to experiment and put like I'm doing. Just dip and smear it on there and then the next time you'll know how much to put in. <laughs> you just go eyeball it. Yeah, you eyeball it. Slice up a few more of these potatoes and we'll have them ready to go on the casserole when I layer another layer of pork chops on there for Miss Lynn. We're making two dishes today. One for her family, and excuse me please, and one for mine. Here's your carrots. Oh, thank you very much. We'll try them out too. I couldn't believe when Hill came home and made this dish because he wasn't a cooker. Mm -hmm. He was like a barbecuer. And uh, he says, Mr. Wallace made this up at the Toyota place and says it was delicious and I'm gonna make it for y'all. And boy, I had to be the gopher and go get all the stuff. And he did the cooking when he messed up all the pots and pans in the house. That's how men do when <laughs> they cook. And so I was the cleaner upper. But um, anyways, he got to experience in cooking, didn't he? <laughs> he didn't just stop with doing that that day. He Every time he went to cook for somebody, if he wasn't barbecuing or something like that, making stew, he was making this dish. And did a pretty good job at it. Everybody liked it. All right, where am I? Now these little carrots, they're not real hard. They're they're soft, so they'll be easy cooked. Yeah, because carrots take a long time to cook. Mm-hmm. So that'll make them easier to cook. Yeah, so anyways, it makes the house smell so good when it's cooking. Okay, now, Miss Lynn, uh, what do we not have? We have everything, don't we? All right, let's, um, let's put another pork chop in the center of this, and um, we'll save that for the other one. All right, now, that's four pork chops right there. Okay. All right, now, we're going to put another layer of potatoes. And then we'll put some cheese on here. You want me to go and like start the oven preheating? Yes, now there's a there's a pan in there you're gonna have to take out, Lynn. Okay. That's what I always do too. I keep my pans in my oven. 
All right. All right, now, you can go ahead and then I'll put just some more of this on here. And like I say, as you see, I'm just reaching and getting and um, spreading it out over the pork chops. And it will be so good, you all, when you get started fixing yours and everything. I'll put a little more of my seasoning in there. And this seasoning has everything that you're really going to need. All right, Miss Lynn, let's see. Let's put a little more of this in here. This is called mushroom soup, cream of mushroom. And so I'm gonna put a little more right here in this hole. <laughs> and it'll cook down through there. Uh-oh, I dropped it. All, All right. right, you ready for me to move that one? Yeah, uh, we will let it cook open fire mm -hmm. and we're going to cook this for about 60 minutes and you're going to put it on what did you put the pre bake 350. on 350 is that good um like i say i usually cook with 400, 400? but but we'll try 350 and that'll mean it'll go the full 60 minutes okay all right let's preheat now i'll go ahead and lay it in there if you want yep. to well, yeah and that way it'll preheat with the uh with the oven and so when we we get through with that we'll take it out and let everybody look at it now i'm going to cook in a glass dish so that you can see how i layer it and everything now the iron skillet is always good to cook in and our grandmas and people used to cook in those all the time back then that's probably what all they that's all they did have to cook in. Right. So, these are the pork chops. Now, you can choose any thickness that you want to with your pork chops. These are very thin, and it might cook faster. So, we'll just have to keep an eye on it. I'm going to start out on the bottom with um, two pork chops. I'm going to move this jar so they can see. Okay. i got two pork chops here. All right, I'm gonna set this right here so I can get to it in a minute. And I mean, put the other two in there. All right, and now I will put, as you see, I'm not doing it exactly like I did the other one. You don't have to. I'm gonna put the mushroom right here on top of the pork chops. And that way it'll cook up through there. And I bet I bet he's in heaven looking down on um, Lynn and I are making this and saying, you're doing so and so wrong. <laughs> Probably I so. I don't think we are. I don't know. He'd be wanting to come eat. It's what he'd want to do. He'd be wanting to come and make it for us. Yep. All right. As you see, I didn't measure seasoning. <laughs> Now, some people put onion on here, and he did, but this seasoning has an onion in it. So we're not gonna put an onion in there. But if you're making your own, you can put it in there. And it's called pork chop vegetable casserole. And it'll be so good, you all. Oh, I love sauerkraut. As I told you the little story about my friends from school and I coming in and getting in my mama's sauerkraut. Boy, it was delicious. That was homemade sauerkraut. Have you ever made it? Yeah, I did, but I put too much salt in it <laughs> and I had to pour it out. <clears throat> We gotta have the carrots. What did I do with them? Right here, I moved them out of the way. Hunt and see you. 
Been a snake it a bit me. You remember back years ago when y'all had those pigs of pills when he had them and he found that uh, food program uptown like a shop that was would let him come and get his frozen food and he would bring them home in that little Toyota in the back in those packages and it would still be froze. Mm -hmm. He'd let us pick through it and get what we wanted out and then we'd all go over there and stand behind the truck and open up those little packages and feed them to the pigs. Yeah. Yeah, that was where the bread trucks brought back day old bread or something other and they would throw them away. And so Hill went and asked them about, you know, if he could come and pick them up in the afternoons and feed them to his pigs, the hogs. And they gave him permission to, so he did that. And that sure did help raising them hogs. It did, didn't it? Mm-hmm. It helped raise them to have for me, and it helped them people get rid of their stuff yep. that they didn't need. <laughs> this gets packed down, and that's why I kept going bonk, bonk with it on the table. Now, if you're going to have a big crowd, you add more vegetables and more pork chops. But the reason I'm cooking in this is so you can see it, you know, through the sides. Yep. And, and you can see the vegetables and the pork chops and everything of cooking. And it'll start bubbling and jumping about. You can see the layers in that pan good. Yeah, that's, that's why I got this out to use. So, it, you know, you could see what we really were doing instead of putting it in on skillet. Now, I have, I have quite a few of those, too. Lynn, Miss Lynn, will you throw that away for me, please? Is that enough cheese? Oh, I think so, because you don't want to get too much. It'll burn. This is like, shake it up, baby. <laughs> That's right. Get my arm exercise. Let's see. We'll put some of this, more of this. Boy, we love mushroom, cream of mushroom in this. I might as well just go ahead and put the rest of it in there. Yep, use it all up. Yeah, we can tell Travis we killed the quart of mushroom soup. Cream of mushrooms. I sure am glad he made this and canned it for us and everything. I know it. He loves to can. I know. I, Me and him both, we can a bunch. I know. Um, there was some more down in there I didn't get. Yeah, don't um, leave none behind. He loves to cook. Boy, I tell you what, he can cook some good barbecue ribs. Man. Make you slappy pappy. That's true. <laughs> All right, we'll wash that out and send it back and tell them we want some refills. <laughs> Refill it. Yeah. Oh, a few more of these. Where's my knife, Lynn? You got it? That little bitty one, honey. Oh, there it is. Yeah. Right over there. It's naked a bit, wasn't it? Might as well go ahead and use these. Yeah. Put them in there. Here, I'll help you cut them. You know, even them, <clears throat> if you're a working lady and you don't want to have to come in and put this all together, you can fix it and put it in the refrigerator. So all you have to do is pull it out and put it in the oven when you come home. And that's good. Let me see your little knife. Oh, way. okay. Sorry. That way the old chocolate. And I guess you noticed when I handed her that knife, I, I handed the handle to her, not the point going toward her. They always said, I worked in school for 21 years in food service. And they always told us not to hand anybody a knife with the point going toward them. That it was very, very dangerous. I'm glad you didn't hand it to me. <laughs> You didn't want to get in my way of it, did you? Uh -uh. 
So, anyways. That looks pretty. Yeah. Well, we'll give the taters on top. And we're going to wrap this up in a few minutes and put this one in to cook. And as soon as we get um, one near ready, we'll show you. Well, we portioned that out pretty good, Lynn. We did, didn't we? For two, mm -hmm. two suppers. Yeah. Two dinners. Smells good. Sauerkraut always smells good to me, though. I'm going to put these potatoes down in this little hole I got here and, and cook them. Yep, I bet I got them. waste them because we done peeled them. <laughs> yeah. Miss Hill would get us if we wasted them taters. Lord, I know what. You didn't waste nothing around her. Right. You can get in the picture of it. Mm -hmm. All right, this is what it looks like. We've got it all put together. And we're gonna put it in the oven and cook it and we'll check it every once in a while. Make sure we're not burning nothing. And as soon as it gets done, we're gonna let you look at it cause you can see it through the sides. And cooking in the orange skillet, it'll probably have a better flavor than this. But I did this clear glass so you could see what it looked like when you were cooking one, cause I know you're gonna do it. It's gonna be good, you all. All right, we're gonna do a taste test? Yes, we're gonna taste this, and then we're gonna show you what they look like after they have come out of the oven after about 60 minutes. I'm gonna get me this one right here. And I'm gonna take one out of this one, and we're gonna taste and see how done it is and how it tastes. Mm. That's good. I give you a thumbs up, Pat. <laughs> Thank you. It tastes real good. You can get the aroma of that um, salt-free stuff. And, good. And now we're going to show you what it looks like. Now, these are the cheese and the potatoes on that. On the skillet, the dark brown looking is the potatoes and the cheese but it's gonna be good. That's right. Cheese makes everything better. Now you're gonna notice this got browner than my other dish over here. So when I sit this back down, I'm gonna hold this one up. Well, I think I am. Oh, it's a little bit warmer, but you see it's lighter so I can put it back in the oven when I eat it tomorrow for dinner and uh, cook it some more. Sure are good. Yes, it is very tasty. Thank you all for watching us and tuning in today. And y'all, it's gonna be good. All right, Travis, this is for you. This is Hillbilly's Dish, and I hope you enjoy it. <laughs>